Hey everyone, it's Rod and uh, it's day four, which means I know I could stay up here another day, but I don't really see a point to have covered an awful lot of ground with very little to no elk sign. But uh, I'm gonna pack everything up and head out. The couple times I've had service, I got a couple Facebook messages about what I'm sleeping in as far as a sleep system, sleeping bag actually they asked, and what kind of tent. Um, one was a tent, one was a sleeping bag. So here's the answer to those questions. One is not a tent, it's actually a, a tarp it's made by Kafaru, and it is one of the coolest things I've ever seen on the entire planet. It weighs less than two pounds. I want to say like 1. 1, 1. 1.8 pounds maybe, or 1.6 pounds, and it packs down to a very, very small small size, and I think that's with the tent stakes, so weighs almost nothing. Super compact, nice to travel with, um, and then it's held up inside by trekking poles, which I like to have anyway, especially hunting solo, because if I'm... Uh, you know, going up and down a rock slide, I shouldn't say rock slide, but in and out of rocks and steep angles. There, I like having the trekking poles just to catch my balance because my pack completely loaded weighs 68 pounds. So it's quite a bit of weight on my shoulders and just don't have an accident. So <clears throat> those poles help quite a bit and they also act as my supports. Now you could cut some sticks when you got to your area instead of using both those uh, poles if you really want to save some weight. I like the poles though too in case I have to cross uh, some deep streams. Um, they're just nice to have, so keep you from falling. Uh, I guess that's it for the tent itself. One more thing I'll go over in a second. So this is inside my tent, and this is the sleep system I've got. So what you see here is a uh, outdoor research bivy, and it is made of Gore-Tex, and if it ain't Gore-Tex, it ain't waterproof. And uh, since the day I've been on staff, I've learned that, and, and I'm not on staff anymore, but I can tell you right now that those are some good people and anything they make is quality and I've never had a problem. I have with virtually every other quote unquote waterproof breathable system, I've had some sort of leaks. I'm not saying it's not possible, it's just, I just stick with what I know works, so. Anyhow, that's what I use. It's nice because I pack it up with me on a day, when I go on my scouting trips during the day, in case I got stuck on the mountain. Um, it's not gonna keep me warm by itself, so sometimes I'll take a sleeping bag if I think that's highly likely. But uh, for the most part, day trips I'll carry it just for uh, backup safety kind of stuff. The next part of my sleeping system is the bag itself. Synthetic uh, mountain hardware. Go with synthetic. Go with synthetic. I'll say it one more time. Go with synthetic. <laughs> Down is nice. It's packable. It's ultralight. But if it gets wet in, um, like if you're hunting in northwest Montana, where I'm probably going to be going to soon, it, it's generally a pretty wet environment. It's not some place you want to have gear that um, isn't going to get you through wet weather. So if your sleeping bag got wet with down, it would have almost no insulation value. So anyhow, that's my whole sales pitch on synthetic versus down. And then the uh, under, other thing underneath that I've got is my sleeping bag. Made by Cabela's Instinct Pad. I don't know if you can see the... I thought this was going to be a really cool comfy pad, but where those little circles are, um, like here and around here, run all the way through that pad. And it seems like my knees and my elbows wind up in those spots. In the middle of the night at some point and I wake up kind of with achy joints from that. Um, it just feels like I'm sleeping on something really soft except for rocks too. It's weird. So I would kind of skip on that. Underneath that I've just got a space blanket and you should be using Tyvek. The only reason I'm using a space blanket is because I forgot my Tyvek and I never forget a space blanket. So anyhow, that's pretty much my sleep system. And for a pillow, I've got a down vest that I use and it is down. But it stays pretty much, for the most part, packed away except for sleeping under or if I get really cold I'll put it under my rain gear if it is rainy but I've got a synthetic one too but the downs just comfier so um, one other thing about this tent that's super cool or this tarp is it's got a port for a stove a titanium stove which I'm, I have and I'll probably be using later in the season the titanium stove literally weighs like 2.6 pounds or maybe it's 2.8 one of the two my entire system sleeping bag pad um, bivy, tarp, tent stakes, all of that is around eight pounds. I want to say it might even be a little bit less than that. So that's pretty impressive. On the other hand, something I have that's really heavy that I'm not impressed with at all, um, and I'll go over my packs in more detail, but I am using a Kafaru pack, which I love to death. And then my day pack is a Tenzing pack, which I hate. <laughs> it's kind of heavy the compartments are difficult to get things in that are worthwhile that I use at least on my mountain hunts so 
I don't know. Um, I'm probably going to pick up like a hiker's backpack. I don't think Afaro makes a small pack. And for me, what I really like, I'm using the, uh, um, I think it's called the Argali pack. It's got two sleeves that fold in. I like it a lot because I can take one waterproof stuff sack with my clothes in it, anything else that I need, and put it in the middle, and my day pack, my deployable day pack as I call it. That's a super cool system for me because once I get up in here like, and I'm hunting like I am where I don't know positively there's elk for sure, there just should be, I may walk a lot of miles like I did on this trip. And during the day, I basically go back as far as I feel like I can with that base camp, pitch it, and then um, I'll spike out from there and then run all these ridges and fingers that you see behind you all over the place looking for elk. So it's a cool system for me. It works really well. I will say the Kafara stuff I've never used before, and I don't know those guys from Adam, um, but uh, the one guy, uh, I think the original owner's obviously pretty smart with a lot of the systems he's invented, but they brought on Aaron Snyder, and I don't know if you know who Aaron is. I don't know him personally, but dude is freaking, he's killing it out there 200 days a year. Um, hunting everything from sheep to elk to whatever and uh, pretty impressive guy I think he did some research or wrote some articles for outdoor life but what's really impressive to me is a guy who a company who has a guy on staff like that and and actually integrates his knowledge and his experience into building stuff because it saves guys like me who aren't out there 200 days a year a uh, whole lot of whole lot of back pains and aches and general blunder so anyhow super awesome system kafaro super tent and not that pack the pack inside the kafaro pack um great company check them out the only problem is this year i don't know that you can get you might be able to get a super tarp in a hurry but most of the stuff is running behind i think just because uh they sell out you need to get a lot of this stuff six to eight weeks before the season starts at least so Big tip for next year for those of you who are looking for stuff or if you're going to go with an outfitter this year and go by yourself next year kind of thing. Um, just some things to keep in mind about some products and uh, hopefully that answers the questions that I got on Facebook Messenger. And I don't know, peace out. I'm going to get everything packed up and head to the truck and hopefully make it before dark. See ya.